Previously on Turn and Rust, Lance and Wyatt continue chasing the dream of this 1952 GMC. Desiring something with a little more power, they have high hopes of getting this 5.3 liter LS engine into its new home. But I think this motor will be everything we need in that truck. Uh, be a little bit more time consuming getting it out than it was that 305 and that GMC, but. Yeah, a lot more hidden stuff. Wrenching and removing anything that gets in their way, they work through a pile of obstacles to get this fuel-injected power source out of the ordinary and on its way to extraordinary. I think I got pretty much everything pulled loose up underneath there, though. Got the drive shaft dropped down, uh, transmission linkage is loose, so... Got our wires snipped up here, so I think we're, you know, ready to pull it out. Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, they develop an outline to introduce some new school technology to this old school hot rod. Got some motor mounts that'll mount right to that frame, right to this motor, so everything should just be bolted together on that. Goal is keep it low and tight and back and <laughs> in the engine compartment, so. It's not like it's a crazy size or anything. Right. It'll go in there and people do it all the time, yep. so. Feeling highly motivated with their accomplishments, the guys bask in the reward of seeing a good plan come together. She's free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward in faith and determination, they proceed to succeed with whatever lies ahead. Given the past a future while serving God and building rods here at Turnin' Rust. Brought to you in part by Maxed Trailers. Where we last left off on this old project, we had just stabbed in the 5.3 motor for its first initial test run. Everything seemed to fit really good, everything looked really well, uh, but unfortunately now we're at the point where we're pulling it back out of the truck again. Uh, as we've moved ahead on this project, a lot of plans have changed. Uh, they've really excelled here. Uh, I'm at the point where I really want to do air ride on this truck. We've got a whole lot of air ride parts that have made it back to the shop now. So now we're at the point where we're going to get it out and move forward on that step. It seems like we've been doing a lot of motor pulling on this project. We started out with a 305, pulled it out, went to the Suburban, pulled the 5.3 out of it, installed into this, pulled the 5.3 back out of this now. Sooner or later, I hope this is here to stay. We very well could have just left the motor and transmission sitting in the truck as we tackled this air ride. Uh, but on it, it's just very modern looking, very ugly. Uh, we want to do away with a lot of the wiring that's on there, a lot of the plastic stuff. So we'll pull the motor out, we'll prep it for paint, we'll get it all fancied up, looking pretty, as well as the frame after we do our air ride. Well, I know it probably seems like a whole lot of <laughs> back and forth on pulling that motor in and out, but I figured I wanted to go ahead and move on to the air ride and I kind of wanted to paint the frame all up anyways before we go ahead and do that final stab of the engine. So, uh, great spot to start here now on getting the air ride all fixed up. But, right. So what you got planned on the control arms? Uh, yeah, on the control arms, I went ahead and ordered some new ones on those, uh, going with chopping block like we did on the old Ecto Boost. I mean, they work great on that, so should be pretty plug and play. Uh, it'll give us all new bushings on all that stuff anyways, and I mean, I'm not sure, but I think it might go ahead and lay rocker with uh, our steps without the drop spindles, but uh, we'll kind of find out once we get to that point, I figure. but Possibly trim out the spring pockets? Yeah, yeah, we'll probably have to trim those out just a little bit to allow some clearance for those bags. So, uh, gonna go, go with just a seven inch bag there. So, uh, should be plenty to lift what we're lifting and move it on down the road. But once we get it all installed, you know, probably do tie rod ends, all that stuff, paint the frame, stab the motor the final time. But, man, I think we'll get this thing down on the ground before we know it, so. I can kind of get used to this new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll spend a little bit more money, but it'll sure save us a lot of time in the long run, and it'll be done, done right and the way we want it. So I knew I wanted this one to be a little bit fancier than the other, so sometimes you gotta, you got to spend a little bit more to make a little bit more happiness and a little bit of ease <laughs> in the long run. But 
I guess we'll go ahead and grab some wrenches, get started, get these old control arms off, and get the new ones on. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a plan to me. Me and Dad are typically on the same page with things. Uh, he loves to see things lowered as well, uh, just typically not as low as I do. With this old truck, I want the running boards to be on the ground with it. Uh, so to make that happen, we're going to have to have the right parts, the right application to make everything function and look the way we need it. I am a big fan of the lowered stance. Lance likes to go ahead and lower it on down to the ground, which normally means a little bit more work, a little bit more money, but in the end, I think it's what we're looking for. So originally this old truck would have been equipped with what they call a straight axle up front. Uh, it would have just been mounted with some leaf springs, not a very good riding ride, uh, and very hard to control as well. Uh, now that this truck is already set up on a S10 frame, it's going to make things a lot easier for the route we're wanting to take here. Uh, we're just going to replace some parts that will allow us to replace the springs with an airbag. Uh, I love everything on air ride, it just looks so much cooler, so much tougher on the ground. Hopefully this thing will go pretty smooth and we'll have the look we're looking for. As soon as this old truck got moved into the shop, I wasn't really sure what direction we were going to go on it. It could have been a very simple fix of basically putting a carburetor on that old 305 engine, getting it running, and moving it down the road a little quicker. Uh, but as we thought on it, our plans have excelled, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for this old girl. Basically, with a good start on any old project is you've got to get down to the bones of it. Uh, that's what we're going to do here now, get the truck up where we can actually see what we have to work with. Uh, even though this truck had been worked on not too many years on back with the frame swap, a lot of this stuff is still covered in grime, still covered in grease. Uh, so we'll have to get all that stuff broke loose, break the parts loose, so we can put the new parts on the way we need to. Just a reminder, these coil springs are under a lot of tension and ready to spring out at any time. So you need to be really professional about taking them out. If professional is not in your ability, at least close your eyes and say a prayer. <laughs> I was pretty glad to hear that Lance bought new A-arms for this project here. You know, we've tried to work with some of these other ones on, on using the original ones that came on the truck. It takes a lot of work to get them to where the, they fit the way that you want them to in that. So I know this way here is really going to save us a lot of time and save me a lot of headache. I think that's pretty much got all the nasty part out of the way for us. So. Yeah, do we need to go ahead and start cleaning this up? Uh, I definitely want to prep the, the frame for paint and everything, but I think it'd be best just to go ahead and do a test run on these control arms. They should fit, shouldn't be any problems, but I want to go ahead and uh, see if we need to trim those spring pockets, make sure the bags are clear, and I think that should be our next step. Just go ahead and bolt in our spring cups, uh, make sure our bags are clearing. A uh, little more work, but later on we'll <laughs> pop everything loose, send it off to be blasted and powder coated, and 
That's going to be nice. So you were serious when you said we're going to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is probably going to be one of our, our better builds that we've ever had come out of the shop, I'd say. So I'm excited to see how it'll turn out. Yeah, but me too. I'll go grab some parts and you grab the plasma and see what we've got to cut loose. <laughs> All righty. Got the bag cups. Yeah, and a little bit of hardware. I think we're probably going to have to trim this spring rocket <clears throat> just a little bit. It's really hard to tell. I think we need to go ahead and get the bags bolted to these spring pockets. Once we set it up in there, we can kind of figure out how much room we need to, to mark and get cut out of there. But I, I highly doubt those bags are right. going to clear. But I'll grab some bolts and we'll get these, get these okay. bags bolted to them. We'll have to run to town and grab some uh, some air fittings. Oh, okay. We won't be able to air this thing up and down until <laughs> we get those in place, but luckily it'll be easy to pull these bags back out later on. Wouldn't be good if I dropped one of these down in that, <laughs> that bag, would it? No. We probably need to pull that plug, that way we can compress the bags, though. Should have done that before I put mine together. We got, I pulled mine off, but... I just didn't want something to fall down in it. <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> no, I just didn't figure it would fit with it on there. Don't worry about getting them too tight, just something enough to hold it in, in place there. Believe it or not, they do go up in there and clear when they're stretched out. Oh yeah. I'm just pretty sure compressed will be an issue. The good thing about these bags is they kind of hold the same shape whether compressed or or aired up so they're not getting really any wider. Right. I say we'll go ahead and mark mark it just a little bit and trim it. I'd rather be safe than, than sorry. Just trim off that little edge that kind of curls back up in there just a little bit. Should be good to go. Then we can go ahead and start mounting our control arms on there. And uh, like I said, before we know it, we'll have this front end knocked out. So we went ahead and trimmed about three quarters of an inch around the whole uh, bag pocket there. Uh, we just want to be sure that we have no clearance issues. We don't want the bag rubbing on this metal, causing an issue later on. Uh, looks like there should be plenty of room. We'll come back later, just, tr uh, just grind it up, smooth it out a whole lot. Uh, should have plenty of room for the bag to clear now the way we want it to. On the front of this truck, I decided to go with an Airlift Dominator bag. Uh, we've used their product on a whole lot of builds around the shop. Uh, never have anything negative, any complaints to say about them. Uh, they work really well. Basically, the bag will mount to a bag cup up top. Uh, the bag cup mounts where the shock originally mounted on the truck. And then you just have a bolt that mounts to your control arm down low. Uh, after that, you've basically replaced your spring with the bag. And voila, you've got movement with air rather than springs. They're definitely all there. <laughs> I'm going to say they're a lot better quality than what we had on the stock arms. I don't know which is going to be. It may be marked left and right. We'll definitely want to figure that out, but that's an upper.
see anything on them. I don't see anything yet. Yeah, we may just kind of have to compare them to the, the stock arms we took off. But those are definitely the upper arms. There's a the lower one. I figure we'll go ahead and just get these lowers mounted in first and then hook them up to the bag, hook the uppers up, get our spindle in there. Okay. We're ready to stop, drop, and roll with it. That's right. You guys might remember the old Ecto Boost project we built around the shop. Uh, it was a 1963 Cadillac hearse. We stuffed a 12-valve Cummins diesel in it and decided it would be really cool to do air ride on it as well. We hooked up with chopping block on that project. Uh, it worked really well to get that car on the ground. So we figured why not go ahead with them again, use their control arms on the front of this truck. I believe it's going to get us down exactly where we want to be and make it really have a cool stance. Over the years, as we tinkered around with air ride on different vehicles and different applications, uh, we, there's been a lot of cases where we've just used the stock control arms. Uh, you can make a bag cup and kind of recess the bag down in them. It'll do the same thing, kind of give you the drop you're looking for. Uh, with this case, we really didn't have the time, kind of didn't really want the headache of that, so we moved forward with these new control arms and it made everything a whole lot easier. So on these stock spindles and brakes, uh, it's, it's obvious that we're not going to go ahead and reuse these. I'm just going to go ahead and place them back on the truck for right now. We're not for sure how much drop we're going to need. I know I want these steps to lay on the ground. Uh, so if we don't have to run a drop spindle, we'll go back with just a stock spindle. Probably go ahead and upgrade the brakes to a little bit larger disc brake as well. Uh, right now, this is just kind of our test run. See how everything fits. See how low we can get it. One thing I know for sure is that I want this sidestep completely on the ground. Uh, what I'm unsure of is every obstacle we might run into before that happens. I'm not really sure if we're going to have any fender well issues up front, if our tires are going to rub wrong, uh, but what I do know is we'll basically just keep moving forward, get our parts bolted on, and hopefully we're getting pretty close to a test run. I got it. I think that's got it good enough. I think that's got us real close to needing to put some wheels and tires back on this old girl. Everything looks pretty good. The bag's clear really well. I don't think we're ever going to have any issues with that. Looks really good. Yeah. Could probably even run a bigger bag if we have to. But the only issue I feel like we might have is these tight rod ends. Uh, depending on how low we have to you know, go with the truck to get it on the ground. We may end up having to notch out this frame just a hair to let those tie rods clear. Uh, but other than that, we won't really know until we try it out. So we're right. going to grab them wheels and see if we can get it up off the jack stands. Sounds good. As the anticipation builds up, we're finally at that point to get it off the jack stands and see what we got. Uh, we're hoping everything holds there the way it needs to. I'm hoping, most importantly, it lays out the way I want it to. I uh, can't wait to see what she looks like on the ground. The front of this truck went together really well. I mean, it really looks good. There was no complications. You know, I have no doubt in my mind that it, this is definitely going to lower the truck. Now, is it going to lower it enough for Lance? I guess we're fixing to find out.
Well, moment of truth here. Yep. It looks like she's holding her own weight pretty good. That's good. And go ahead and try to let it down. Give it a try anyways. Kind of watch these tie rods here. Make sure they ain't. We're going down. Looks pretty good so far. Yeah, thank you. We're getting pretty close to this tie rod right here. Yours looks okay. it too. Yeah. Looks like we still lack another three or four inches before that cross member's on the ground. So I think we're definitely gonna have to trim out. You can go a little bit more. I'll just let you know when it's touching. Okay. All right, right there. Yeah, we're gonna have to trim the frame out for those tie rods just a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're pretty close. I mean, inch and a half, two inches off the ground. Now that's that's still too high for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I figure though, let's go ahead and move on towards the back. I know once we get the back down, it's gonna make everything look a lot, setting a lot right. better anyway. So uh, we can come back to this. Uh, I know there is a possible route of even going. They make uh, some some bent tire rods that'll kind of clear where you don't have to worry about that. But either way, that's an issue we'll have to address. But. So okay. we've knocked out the front and move on to the back and see how it goes. That's right. Yep. yep. So how hard do you think this back's going to be? Uh, I'm hoping it ain't too bad, but I think I always have wishful <laughs> thinking like that. So one thing I did notice, though, is our wheelbase is a little off back right. here. And if you notice, it looks like whenever he set it down on this frame here, uh, he got something a little off. But yeah. Uh, I think maybe we could get the front aired back up, go ahead and get a measurement on our wheelbase so we know what we're starting with. Uh, I mean, I would dare to say it's probably at least an inch off, though. Yeah, so at least an inch. We definitely want to get that wheel centered in the fender. Uh, I just hate the way that looks if your wheelbase is <laughs> off. So uh, get that. That's pretty crucial. Get some measurements, some marks. Uh, we'll have to take this bed off because we'll install our frame notches next. but. Uh, figure once we once we get the bed off, there won't be a whole lot of the truck left here. But <laughs> looks like we're working backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now I think I'll grab a tape measure. Let's get our wheelbase, get some marks, get the bed off, and start on them notches. All right. Next time I think we start at the finish. <laughs> There's several things that Lance will nitpick while we're building the truck and that. But the thing I know for sure that he's gonna look for is if the wheelbase is right. If that wheel doesn't fit right in that fender well, he's not gonna go for it. To some people, this wheelbase issue might not be an issue at all. Uh, to me, it's something that really bothers me. I've been to a lot of car shows, been, seen a lot of nice builds uh, where your, your wheelbase is just not quite right. Uh, so for me to move forward without fixing this is gonna be a problem for me in the future. So we for sure wanna get some good measurements, make sure we get everything centered the way we want it to be. Uh, that way I can move forward and be happy with myself. I think that's pretty much got everything on it. Alrighty, I hope so. Let's see if she's loose. Probably gonna be pretty heavy. I wouldn't expect anything else. Got it. Got it. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. Uh, well, looking a little bit easier to mess with, don't it? Yeah. There's quite a bit of room between that axle and the frame anyway. It sure is. So we got a lot of travel that'll allow. We may not have to have much of a notch at all. So I'd love to go that route. I'd rather leave this bed just looking as stock as possible. I mean, kind of hate the look of a big raised floor or the, you know, big notch cover in the middle of it. So yeah. uh, 
I don't know, I'm kind of thinking maybe run about a 20 inch wheel on this truck and something with a low profile tire. Uh, so we'll definitely need to get some measurements, you know, get our overall diameter of the wheel, how far we are off the running boards from the ground. Center of our axle needs to be on our frame there. But okay. I figure go ahead and get our mark on our, on our wheelbase where we want it to be and start piecing the, the notches together and weld them in, get that frame cut and move on to the four link. All right. Lance is a lot better on the on the numbers and the, and the calculations on putting these notches in. That's just not something that I, I get involved in a whole lot. And if I did and I mess up, I have nobody but myself to blame. So when you're determining the configuration and the stance of your old truck, uh, there's a whole lot of numbers that are gonna come involved here. At this point, you wanna be completely sure that all these numbers are gonna be the correct numbers. Uh, you could run into issues where you possibly build your notch too small, uh, not allowing your truck to drop on the ground the way you need it to, or possibly the alternative of having a notch way too big and losing way too much of the interior of your bed. Uh, at this point, we just wanna make sure that everything is correct and we build it precisely how it needs to be. For anyone that's interested in trying to air ride their vehicle, uh, you most definitely don't have to take the approach of installing a frame notch. Uh, I can definitely see where that could be a little bit scary for someone that has no experience of doing it before. Uh, it was that case with me the very first time I tried it. Now that we've had a few under our belt, uh, we're confident in knowing that we need these notches to get the look on the truck that we're looking for. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing a step notch on a truck. Uh, we've used rectangular tubing before. Uh, on this case, we went with a, just an eight inch notch from Thor Brothers. Uh, it's made to fit this S10 frame. We'll have to do a little bit of trimming on the frame as well as these notches just to make them fit the way we want them to. Uh, but all in all, pretty plug and play, pretty simple option for it. Well, guess we'll see how these things fit. You're ready. I think the long side goes towards the front of the truck. Definitely looks like we're going to have to trim this top frame rail some, yeah. the width of it. So These should just slide over the outside of the frame rail. Uh, once we get everything fitting the way we want it, obviously we don't want to notch this tall. Right. So uh, we kind of want to get our notch down a lot lower. So there'll be a lot of just trimming, fitting, trimming, and fitting to make sure everything clears. But uh, let's go ahead. We still ain't got our, our line where we want our, right. our wheelbase to be. Let's get that marked. You think go ahead and pull out these shocks, shocks. and stuff? Brake line. Yeah, looks like that brake line over there. Get it pulled out of the way. Get them close to getting the welded in, then we'll cut the frame rail out. Well, I feel like we at least got a direction to go with it. So. As long as it's the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Quite similar to the rest of this project, uh, we're at the point now where we basically need to remove anything that's in our way keeping us from getting this truck the way we want it to be. Uh, a lot of this stuff was not going to be usable on the application the way we have it set up anyways. Uh, so just getting it out of the way will give us more room, uh, more possibilities, and a whole lot better outcome in the end. We finally reached a point in this project where I feel most comfortable. You know, we're in here, we're fixing to start demo and taking things off. Uh, you know, I feel like a $10 surgeon. I'm in here ripping things out, throwing stuff out of the way and that. Finally getting things to where we can operate. A 
lot of times these old parts are put together with rivets. Uh, you know, they were put in there to keep these things from moving. They weren't meant to come out. So what we wind up having to do is we have to get either a torch, a grinder, and eventually the, the air hammer. Uh, Lance usually doesn't like to use the air hammer. He says it hurts his ears. Uh, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect my hearing. So everything's fine. That sounds good. Huh? Sometimes at the shop it can lead up to some really long days, especially when you're working on a project quite this big. Uh, having Dad as your co-worker, he most definitely tries to keep us entertained all the time. I mean, you never know what to expect out of him, but not all the time is everything funny. Ah! <laughs> We're not getting you workman's comp. Ow. <laughs> Can I go home now? <laughs> no, that was funny. I believe this thing should just slide right over the frame rails now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's really good. Once we get everything centered up there, uh, the only issue we've got is it's a little bit taller than what we're wanting. So I kind of want to keep it as low as possible, but still have clearance to right. allow our axle. So uh, from what I calculated up with the wheels we're wanting to run, uh, overall diameter of those, I think we're gonna to need to be about two inches above the, what the frame rail is right there. Okay. So I think we can just get a tape, measure what we got, figure out the difference, and then we'll just trim out the, the ends here. That'll allow it to drop down a little bit more. May have to trim off the bottoms and then weld them in, cut it out, move on. Move on. Working pretty good? Yeah, going quick. Before we're going to do our final welding of these to the frame, uh, we're just going to trim them a little bit to get them setting exactly where we want them to be. Uh, we want to be sure at this point we get everything centered on our wheelbase as well as the height the way we want it. Uh, I don't really want to have to have a really high raised floor in this truck, something that just looks awkward and weird. So I want to get them down as low as possible, but also be able to get the truck on the ground. On this air ride, you want your measurements and that to be really precise. You don't want to make any big mistakes or any small mistakes. You want everything to be just right. You know, you don't want one side of the truck lift up higher than the other. Nobody's interested in an unlevel truck. Well, see how they fit. All righty. Try to get that center line mark uh, lined up as good as you can. Mine seems to fit really good over here. Yeah, mine too. Check the measurement on it, see how close we are. 
Yep, right at two inches on this side. Check yours. I think we're finally at the spot to go ahead and scribe some lines on this frame where we know to clean the old paint off of it. Look good? Yeah, it looks good. Clean the paint off of it, prep it to weld it in. I'll just weld here on the outside right now, everywhere that I can. And then we'll go ahead and take a sawzall blade, cut this center section out, then I'll just cap it in last. So those worked out really well. Yeah. I think those will save us a lot of time in the long run and look pretty good. Yep. So. Making some progress. Yeah, slow and steady. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. Once we finally find a happy spot of where we want these frame notches to be, uh, we'll just take a few safety precautions. Uh, we're gonna be generating a lot of heat on these old frame rails, so we wanna put some jack stands that'll keep everything level uh, to keep everything to be sure that our bed doesn't get out of kilter as we're doing it. A lot of people have a misconception on air ride. They seem to think all you can do is just slam the vehicle down on the ground. You know, that, that's just a misunderstanding all the way around. Uh, you know, if you want to have that stock look, you can air that thing up, hit the road like that. If you want to be cool like Lance, you can slam it down on the ground. Or if you want to be anything in between, you can be there. So, you know, this, this air ride really makes a big difference. You can be something different every day. Our original goal was to keep these frame notches as low as we possibly could. Uh, with being able to only raise it about two inches above the uppermost point of the original stock frame, uh, that's going to help us a whole lot to keep this bed as low and as tight as we want it to be. Originally, this was supposed to be a, a, a low budget build for us and that. But it seems like here lately, every day when we come in, there's new boxes, new parts. Uh, this, this one here looks like it's going extreme. I just hope we don't get in over our heads. When doing any kind of step notch, you want to be sure that you do all your welding up front. Uh, leaving the last part of just cutting out your frame rail, your factory frame rail towards the end there. Uh, what that's going to do is just keep everything good and straight. Uh, if you make your cut too soon and then try to weld, uh, your frame's going to just go whichever way it wants to. And at this point, we're just wanting to weld everything in good and solid. We may even come back and reinforce the frame rails where they match up with the notches. Uh, but other than that, everything should be good to go. We've done a lot of measurements to be sure that we got these notches exactly where we want them to be. Uh, we, there's a certain wheelbase we need on this truck. You also need to make sure that everything's square, everything height-wise is good as well. Uh, so we got them tacked in. I just welded them up along the outsides. We're going to wait on the inside here. That's what we're about to do now is just cut out the center frame section. Uh, you always want to do this at the last point. It's very crucial that you do this in a, in a, in a certain order. Otherwise, you're liable to have your frame rails come up a different height and then you've got bad issues with your truck. Uh, so right now we're going to cut that out. We'll cap it in with some more metal, weld it up. Should be good to go. When Lance was a teenager, he decided he was going to lower his daily driver. Uh, I don't know for a fact that he even ever cut on a frame on a vehicle and that, but he decided he was going to. So the first thing I did, I told his mom, you better start praying. I don't know what she prayed, but ever since then, he's loved the Lord.
A lot of the things you see us doing around the shop, uh, we're basically self-taught on. Uh, there may be moments when we're a little bit out of our comfort zone, but that definitely doesn't mean we're not capable of fulfilling the task ahead of us. Uh, the option of having another shop come in and perform whatever we may be challenged on is just really not an option right now. And God's definitely blessed us both with being very hands-on. I feel like He's really blessed me with being creative. And I've always thought, what better teacher of creativity than the Creator Himself? Well, I believe that's pretty much got them all welded in like we need them to be. Yep. We'll have to come back with a grinder in just a couple spots, clean it up just a little bit, but it seemed to work out pretty well yeah. on them. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. I think it's definitely going to give us the clearance we need to get this bad boy on the ground the way I'm wanting it to be. So uh, I guess our next steps go ahead and move forward with, uh, with the four link on it. I uh, went ahead and ordered just a triangulated four link from Thor Brothers, uh, set up for this S10 frame, so that'll save us a little bit of time too. Uh, we'll have to move, move our spring perches just a little bit. A lot of the stuff's bolt on, so it'll save us a lot of time. Got a new cross member for the upper bars and stuff like that. But uh, I figure go ahead and grab that, start mocking it all up, make sure everything fits well. We'll, you know, do all the finish detail stuff right there at the end, but. All in all, she's definitely she's definitely getting in the right direction. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm wore out on all the welding I did. <laughs> I bet you are. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead and grab that four link stuff and start laying it out and see what we even got and head in that direction. All right. As we're cutting this center section out and begin to cap it in, uh, I was thinking just to throw a number out there to you guys, uh, this axle, the top of it to the bottom of the stock frame rail was around 10 to 11 inches anyways. Uh, we've added another six inches with our step notch. Uh, to just put that into perspective, this thing's gonna be low. Should work there. What we're gonna do now that we have this rear end pulled out from underneath the truck is basically getting rid of all the stock components it had. Uh, originally, this S10 would have just had just this leaf spring set up. Uh, we're completely eliminating that and going with the air suspension back here. Uh, to run the air suspension, we chose to go with a triangulated four link. That's what's gonna keep everything in line side to side, up and down, keep our pinion angle the way it needs to be. Uh, so right now, we're just gonna pull these springs off. Cool thing about this kit is it, it does use a lot of the stock uh, positions of the bolt-on stuff. So once we get it off, we'll bolt some stuff on. Very little welding, should go pretty smoothly. I decided to go with the Thor Brothers kit on this four link system. They pretty much have the market made when it comes to S10s and getting them on the ground. This truck already having the S10 frame up underneath it. We went with the triangulated four link. It's all completely bolt on system, super high quality, and it's gonna save us a lot of time. I'm glad to see that Lance got this kit. Uh, when we're working with this triangulated four link, it has all the degrees and the angles that you have to mess with and that. And this takes the, the guesswork out of it and it gets me home a couple hours earlier.
We decided to go with a triangulated four link setup on this truck. Uh, basically that'll have the upper bars at a slight angle compared to the bottom bars. Uh, we'll bolt on our third member bracket that'll hold those bars and basically that'll eliminate any side to side movement. Of course we'll come back later. We've heard y'all's cries. This truck will not leave here without Positrack rear end. Well, that should pretty much have our axle all prepped for the next step, so cleaned it a little bit more than probably what I need to, but uh, that'll allow us to go ahead and we'll tack our lower uh, four link bars on here. Also our lower bag brackets are going to mount here, so once we get the axle back up underneath there, we'll kind of have a better idea where all that stuff needs to go. But I think we're at the point now to go, go ahead and go on back to the frame and get some of those cross members out. Uh, get to knock out some rivets. <laughs> yeah. You know what's next exactly. <laughs> so we'll have to get those cross members out, get those leaf spring hangers loose. Uh, we'll grind at them rivets, cut at them, whatever we got to do, get the air hammer, knock them out. Uh, need to move those leaf spring hangers back just a little bit. So okay. got a new cross member that'll replace that one. Hopefully we're getting real close to getting this four link, you know, where it works up and down. Then we'll move to the bag brackets, have this thing on the ground pretty quick. All righty, I'll grab the air hammer. Works for me. With this kit, the instructions say to move the factory leaf hangers back of the truck eight and three quarters of an inch. Uh, with us needing to shorten our wheelbase, uh, we're basically just gonna knock an inch off that. So we'll be moving them back seven and three quarters of an inch and also keeping in mind that on our cross member up top, we need to do the same. There's all kinds of different four link systems out there and I believe they're really changing daily. We decided to go with a triangulated four link on this truck. It just was really gonna work well with our application. Uh, but you've got the parallel four link. There's just all kinds of different ways. Basically, they just all play the same part. You wanna keep your axle under your vehicle. Uh, so that's gonna keep everything centered, everything tight. Uh, keep your pinion angle good on your drive shaft. All in all, as long as you keep those things where they need to be, it's pretty much up to you which style you want to go with. Reality is about to set in on these old rivets. I know they've got to come out. They were put in there to stay in there. Uh, Lance tells me that he would help me, but he can't hold the gun and hold his fingers in his ears at the same time. Uh, I think we tried. He probably could. He just ain't doing nothing. Finally got all the stinking rivets <laughs> knocked out of this thing. Uh, now we're going to have to go ahead and start drilling some holes to move these leaf spring hangers back. Uh, okay. Instruction sole should move them back eight and three quarter inch. That's still going to have us back a little further than what we need to be. So we'll go ahead right. and cheat forward. So it'll be seven and three quarters. Uh, figure, just mo uh, measure off our the holes where they were. Get some marks, bolt them on there, and then we'll move on to this cross member. Okay. Uh, it, it's it's made about where it was, you know, factory. So we'll also need to take that into consideration. Yeah, scoot it one way or the other. Yeah, scoot it back and or scoot it forward an inch as well. So well, I'll go grab a marker and grab that drill and we'll get some holes in this old thing. Alrighty. On
on these four link bars, everything's already been pre-cut, pre-welded, pre-fabbed together. Uh, so as we're placing everything in place, that's really crucial that we get all our measurements, all of our spots drilled in the exact location when we want it. Uh, Cause once we bolt them in, there's no adjustment later. Hopefully relocating these parts will correct any problem we have with the wheelbase. Then we can move on to some more important issues, like when's lunch. Once we've got everything moved and bolted in place where we think it needs to be, uh, we'll just do one final measurement, be sure that everything's square, and then we'll go ahead and weld it up. We decided to go ahead and go with the rear end that was already up underneath this truck. Uh, the previous owner had already put in an eight and a half inch. Uh, that should be plenty for what we're looking for. With every Thor Brother product we've ever purchased, it's always come in super beefy and super high quality. Uh, there's no exception with this four link kit as well. With us wanting to build a really cool street rod, there's not any other kit that I'd rather go with. I'm planning on going with a behind the axle airbag mount on this truck. Uh, that's going to keep us down on our height where we're losing it inside of our bed. It's also going to give us a better ride quality. Got all yours? Yep, got mine. I think that's pretty much got all the bolt together stuff. Yeah, looking really good. It's turning out nice, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> kind of at a pretty crucial point here now, we want to go ahead and be sure we get our pinion angle on that drive shaft the way we want it. So uh, I figure we'll go ahead and get this down probably where we think, you know, we'll be driving it at. Set that at the angle we need. I'll go ahead and start tacking on these, these last brackets here. So once we tack them on and get it welded up, That'll complete the four length. So yep. looks like we're gonna have plenty of travel. Everything looks like it's gonna clear good. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I'll go get that angle gauge. All right. I'll grab those pieces and start fitting them up. While you're trying to get everything set on the rear suspension, uh, be sure that you just go ahead and just put a small tack weld on everything first. Uh, at this point, you're just trying to make sure everything's gonna work, everything's gonna clear the way you need it to be. Uh, it's a whole lot easier just to break a little tack weld loose if you need to change it. And you, once you get it set in place, just weld it up solid the way it needs to be. It can kind of be a lot of back and forth when you go to doing some of this welding. Uh, I could have very easily left the axle up underneath the truck, laid on my back on the cold floor and welded it up there. Uh, to me, if we can go ahead and pull it out here where we can see everything a whole lot better, know that we got a whole lot more visibility, a whole lot more room, and have a whole lot better welds. You also want to keep the bag brackets at the same pitch. You don't want to put the bags in any kind of bind that they don't need to be in. That way you get the full lift out of the bag without any rubbing. With the change of the heart on this project, it's got into its veins and it's really spread quickly. It's pushed us to have to change the brakes. It's pushed us to have to change the, the suspension. You know, it's, it's just, it's, once it gets in there, it's always gonna have a domino effect that you're gonna wanna have to upgrade everything and, and make it match up with the heart that you've just installed in it.
We don't always try to go so extreme on every build. Uh, only when we're trying to top whatever the last project was we were working on. But there's a lot of stuff that we do at the shop behind the scenes you don't see. A lot of smaller work goes into it that helps keep our doors open. One thing that I can say, if you're trying to build a custom ride and it's going to be for yourself, if you're going to put a lot of work into it, you might as well do it the way you want it to be. Okay. Now she look. It looks... <laughs> Things stinking slammed, yeah. ain't it? It slammed way up in there. It looks like the running board can be sitting flat on the ground. Yeah. Well, that was our goal when yeah. we started it. I wanted to get it as low as we possibly could. So, pinion angle looks great. Everything on the four link looks to be working well. Uh, right here at the point of just needing our upper back brackets, yeah. but kind of need to know for sure our overall, you know, tire diameter. Right. That way we know we're not up off the ground or too far scraping the body. So. Uh, I know we're really, really close, but I think we'll go ahead and call it a day and come back right. tomorrow. I don't want to get rushed into setting those and right. get them at the wrong height. So uh, make a few decisions, get some measurements, weld those up tomorrow. Should have a moving up and down truck. So <laughs> I cannot wait to see this old right. girl on the yeah. ground, though. Mm -hmm. It's going to look so different, just slammed out, right. body on the ground, wheels tucked three quarters of the way up in the fender wells. So. Well, I guess I'm going to get cleaned up a little bit and go ahead and head on to the house. So. Alrighty, I'll be right behind you. So, <laughs> Well, moving on to one of the cheaper part of the air ride system that does all <laughs> the work here. Those should just sit there on the lower bag brackets like that. I bought a pretty basic bridge kit that will just run across here from the two notches. So uh, it will hold our, our upper bag mounts there. Now obviously these things will compress down a lot more. I think they go down to about 2.8 inches. So okay. uh, we're just going to need to get some measurements, you know, exactly what height we want to want to set these at because we don't want to lose lifting height out of our bags and right. uh, we don't want to set them where we can't get the truck all the way down. So I guess I'll go get that kit, start getting some measurements, uh, get it welded in, make sure everything's squared up. Should go pretty easy on that point. So. Once we get that welded in, shoot some air to it and let her play yeah. around with it. Let her high or low. We decided to drill holes in the side of our notches so that we could insert our upper bridge bar. This bar gets a lot of weight on it. Not only do we want good welds, but it's also good to know that we have extra material sticking inside the frame as well. You want to keep these bags level. You don't want to have any issues later of when you're airing these things up. You want them to be the same height. That way when you lay this thing out, it looks perfect. As we start to mount these upper bag brackets, uh, we know that the bags compress down to about three inches, so we want to be sure that we get all of our measurements correct, that way we get the full lift out of these bags. As we're tacking everything into place, we want to be sure that there'll be no possible chances of these bags rubbing in the future. Uh, if they're rubbing on any kind of piece of metal, it's going to cause a problem, it's going to cause a leak, and it's going to leave you stranded. I'm going with a really thick walled pipe to hold these upper bag brackets in place, uh, but the fact of the matter is there's going to be a lot of weight sitting on them. So we may want to come back later and add in a little reinforcement. Everything's looking good. We've got the upper bag brackets already welded on. Now all we have to do is weld in the upper bag bar. On 
on these rear bags, we're going with the same product line as we did on the front. Uh, using the Air Dominator bags, they've worked well for us in the past, so we've stuck with them. Uh, we'll be using the same bag back here. We used a seven inch on the front. On the back, we'll just be using a little bit bigger bag and running an eight inch. Well, I think we're finally at that point we've been waiting on. Yeah. Shoot a little air to it and see what she does. Yeah. I got plenty of clearance. Yeah. Yeah, bags look good all the way around. Don't look like anything's going to rub. So definitely I want to come back, clean up some of these welds just a little bit. But I figure we'll shoot some air to it, get it off these jack stands maybe, and see what we actually have here. So don't want to jump too far ahead on cleaning some stuff up and find out right. if we have any issues, but uh, I guess I'll go grab them air hoses. We'll shoot some air to it, get it out, see how low she goes. All right. <laughs> Things are getting extremely close to seeing what we have on the back of this truck. The front seemed to lay out really well. Now it's time to test out the rear to see if she lays out just as good. <laughs> well, we're laying bumper back here, yeah. so must the, be doing some good. <laughs> <laughs> running board's not touching yet, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I bet once we get the front end down, that'll probably fix that for us. Yeah, the frame lacks about another inch and a half to, to lay frame. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's let that front end down and see what we got. Should look a lot better. How's she looking? I think you're going to like it. <laughs> Man, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. I don't think we could have got her any lower than that. No, not unless you put her in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I just love the way these things look slammed out. To me, it just makes everything look so much tougher, so much cooler. It's hard to tell what it's going to look like, you know, obviously with all the panels gone off of it. But right. get all that stuff pieced back on it and it looks like a truck again. <laughs> be pretty pretty to look at but she's come a long way she sure has got a long road ahead of us still but I'm really happy yep. just seeing her on the ground just uh, figure out what wheels we want to go with get those bad boys on there get the rest of the panels uh, I think I'll go ahead and start cleaning up some of those welds on the four link and the notches back there and uh, figure might as well go ahead and take advantage of that rogue fab bender while we got it and put it together and I could probably, you know, reinforce a lot of that stuff, kind of pretty it up, fancy it up with some bent tubing and stuff. But other than that, I mean, getting really close to getting this thing ready to have the frame powder coated on it. Then we'll move back to putting the motor back in it one last time, but I'm really happy, so. Didn't it start out all we needed was a carburetor? Yeah, it did, yeah, it did, but I'm really happy. I'm yeah, really happy too. with the way it's turned out and I think we will be in the long run. So, like I said, I don't know, what direction this truck will finally end up in, but I definitely want her to be a fancy one. So. And she will. Well, I'll probably start piecing that bender together, get that stuff bent out, weld it in, move on to putting the bed on it. Yep. I thought it would be really cool on this project to just add a little extra bent tubing here and there, uh, something that's going to give it some reinforcement and also give it a little bit more of a look. Uh, we teamed up with a company called Rogue Fabrication. We've got this really cool pipe bender right here. I'm about to weld it up solid where we can use it, and that'll just finish up the finishing touches on this air ride. Now this thing comes unassembled, but you can also purchase it fully assembled. With this unassembled version, it's a little bit cheaper on your pocketbook, but you can just weld it up real easy and have a tubing bender working in no time. In the application we're working with, we've just installed our upper bag brackets. It's just one singular pipe that's only going to be able to hold so much weight. With this tubing bender, you're able to be creative, go ahead and add some reinforcement pieces, and that's exactly what we're about to do here.
Now that we have this bender fully installed, everything seems to be working the way it should. Let's just get some pipe and put her to work. Even though we're just at a part where we're basically reinforcing an area on the truck, uh, we still want everything to be symmetrical, we still want everything to look really well. So we're just going to use our imagination on this, uh, build up something in our minds that we think will look really cool, but will also serve the purpose of reinforcing these upper bags. There's really no right or wrong way when it comes to doing something like this. Uh, if you like the style, if you like the way something looks and it's safe, I say go for it. With this, I just wanted to add a little bit more metal to add a little bit more personality to it. None of this stuff up underneath here will ever be seen again, but mark my word, I'll see on a little to-do list, must have hydraulic lift on bed to show off frame. Thanks, Lance. As I'm seeing this thing come together, I'm getting really excited to lay eyes on our final product here. But all in all, once we get everything fabbed together, once we get it all painted up real nice, it'll just be really cool and really rewarding to show someone later on. Not only will these bars add some strength, they're gonna add a lot of curb appeal to this. And hopefully, maybe down the line, we'll use it for some of our air management stuff. As all of this is beginning to take shape, I can't help but to look at it and just think about what if when we raise the floor of our bed, we go ahead and put it on some hydraulic lifts. I mean, it would be really cool to be able to lift that thing up, show off your work, and heck, it'd make it a lot easier if you needed to work on something. We're bending some really thick pipe on this bender. Uh, it hasn't skipped a beat. I know that we'll use this thing in the future on a lot of our projects. We're still at a point where we'll have to go back and add our shock mounts. Uh, we're gonna have to have a spot to have our compressors and tanks mounted as well. A lot of this tubing we're adding in uh, could possibly be a great access point to mount that stuff off of. I'm extremely happy with the convenience and the strength of this Rogue Fab Bender. I mean, you don't have to be an expert fab guy to be able to work this machine. It's worked out really well for us, and it'll definitely get you out of a spot. Looking good. Yeah, only problem is, I figure I gotta find a stopping point <laughs> with it. It's kind of fun playing around with that bender, and you can sure fancy everything up, so. Yeah. That's definitely going to have these upper bag brackets super reinforced now. I don't think we'll have any issue of those moving at all, but right. it might be cool later on to come up maybe forward just some more stuff just to kind of, I mean, everything will give it a little bit more strength and a little bit more look too. I just don't want to overdo it right. either. So uh, getting pretty excited to kind of see the, the truck actually put together <laughs> and on the ground. So I think we'll just call it good right here. Definitely come back later. Like I said, I want to clean up all these welds before we, send it off to powder coating. Right. See what she looks like with the bed on it anyways. We may have to, or well, we're definitely gonna have to cut out a little bit of the floor to allow it to clear. But other than that, I think this is wrapped up and we'll get it over here, start figuring out what we wanna do, cut the floor out or take all the wood out or what. But 
either way, we're getting it on there and <laughs> seeing what she looks like today. All right, that sounds good to me. It's pretty comical on this old truck. Uh, when we started dragging it into the shop, we were thinking, man, this could be a really cool quick flip we could do around here. Uh, the plans really exploded and have really took a drastic turn since then. This truck could have been a possible two-week project of just replacing the carburetor and the exhaust, but now it's turned into a major deal. We replaced the 305 with an LS engine for more horsepower. Now the name of the game is to get this thing as low as we possibly can. Now that it looks like we're really getting close to the completion of this air ride, I can't help but think what we will do next. Uh, my brain's been all over the place, even as far most to the point of considering possibly kicking patina on this old girl and going with shiny paint. To hear the word shiny paint come out of his mouth, that was like a punch to my face. I'm gonna have to get some soap and wash his mouth out. I don't know if he's sick or done lost his mind. I'll believe that when I see it. Well, what do you think about her? I like it a lot better with the panels on it. Oh yeah, those old wheels definitely tuck up in there quite a bit, don't they? Yeah. And I absolutely love the stance of it. It's everything I was looking for on that part, but I don't know, I just feel like it's missing a little something. What's that? Now that's a whole lot better there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely gave it that fancy look we're looking for. Yeah, it definitely needed that a lot. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it changed completely. Everything looks really good on it. I mean, as far as the offset, everything tucks really well. So really happy. I wasn't for sure what wheels we were going to go with on this build, but I mean, I think we nailed it with these ones. Everything looks really good yeah, on it. But. Looks really good. I guess we're done with the, uh, the air ride now. Uh, pretty much. The hard part's yeah. done, so uh, of course we'll come back, do a little bit of finishing on those welds and stuff, prep everything for powder coating. Uh, but other than that, yeah, maybe just uh, shock mount, stuff like that, and got to figure out our air management system, you right. know, whatever's yeah. going to make this thing go up and down, but besides a compressor air hose. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, I mean, it's really cool seeing her laid out, new wheels, new attitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it changed it completely. I mean, she doesn't even look like the same truck she started out like. Yep. Yeah, I feel like she's got a little bit of a personality now to, to build off of, so it's always nice to see them start coming together and put your, your ideas on what you want it to really be. But right. My gears are still turning, so we'll unfortunately rip everything apart now. <laughs> Have the frame sandblasted, powder coated, stab that motor one last final time. So uh, I hope you, I hope you're serious for that. <laughs> yeah, one last time on the motor, then we'll move on to the next step. So I'm really happy with where we're going with it. So can't wait to see how she turns out. I, I know I want it fancy, but other than that, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. And she's headed that way. Yeah. Well, until then, I guess I'll just daydream about what we want to do to her next. <laughs> okay, just no nightmares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you.
Well guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. We thank you so much for your continued support and your patience as we try to get these things out to you. A project like this is quite intense and not only does it take a lot of time with the hands-on part, but there's a lot of time invested in the filming and editing as well. With that being said, we have some really good news for you guys to try to get some footage out there to you quicker. If you guys just can't get enough of Turn and Rust content, we're proud to announce that we now have YouTube memberships. With the membership, you'll be able to receive some exclusive looks to upcoming projects and some even behind the scenes stuff. Also another cool perk is you'll be invited to weekly live streams where you can sit down with us, ask us any question you might have, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability. If this sounds like something you're interested in by supporting us on a monthly basis, just click that join button below. It'll drop down all the details and benefits you'll actually be receiving. This helps Turning Rust on a monthly basis to be able to bring out bigger and better builds a higher production quality, and just an overall better show. We thank you so much for your support, and we can't wait to see what's next for Turning Rust.